Welcome everybody to our newest episode of podcast Bridging Voices. Uh, today we have a really distinguished guest here and also a friend, I would say, uh, Nino Kalandatze from Georgia. And we want to start with a short introduction and then dive into like all these uh, various topics that uh, happened in Georgia over the recent months and years, um, which gives us a lot of uh, topics to talk about, uh, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, Nino, uh, welcome, first of all, and uh, so happy to have you here. Um, you have been here before uh, in November um, for like a really interesting discussion also with EU officials. So we're really looking forward to that. And yeah, with that, I would just like uh, ask you to shortly introduce yourself and uh, what you're doing at the moment in Georgia with your work. Thank you, Dennis. It's a great opportunity to talk about uh, our work, what we are doing, how we are trying to contribute to general democratic development in the country, what's on our side, uh, and to have this opportunity to talk to you um, on Georgia, on the political landscape, how it is going on or developing uh, particularly since the Ukraine war mm, and how it may affect uh, the developments in the region and uh, then accordingly for Europe and, and for Brussels. Um, as uh, you already mentioned, I'm representing the Jav Jabatze Center. The center is uh, the first civic society organization in Georgia that was modeled after the um, European political foundations. Mm, unlike traditional uh, political foundations uh, in Europe, uh, we are political but not partial. Um, we work, uh, therefore, with, uh, with uh, diverse um, social groups, uh, also with political parties. Mm, we do, or the, the um, full name of the Javjavadze Center is uh, the Center for European Studies and Civic Education. So we do uh, some research and studies, uh, but a lot of civic education. Uh, and uh, as I said, while, while we are working with uh, different social groups, our main target still remains uh, youth outside the bigger cities. Uh, we target those uh, who lack access to uh, informal education, um, who uh, um, are less, less exposed to the West, um, speak probably um, little English or no other foreign languages uh, other than perhaps Russian, and uh, therefore are very susceptible to widespread uh, disinformation in Georgia and propaganda. And uh, through civic education, we are trying uh, to also build resilience uh, and um, somehow prepare uh, our new generation, how to resist uh, the, the propaganda and, uh, you know, how to tackle with it on a daily basis. Uh, we have uh, basically two major projects uh, we are implementing. Mm, this is one is civic memory uh, that concerns um, with uh, refreshing the memory on recent history and also targets mainly those who have not lived uh, throughout the 90s uh, and um, what we are basically trying is to give everyone uh, a bigger picture of historic events to better understand the political context and uh, to better uh, understand the mistakes that the society has done before and how to avoid repetition of those mistakes. Mm, this is uh, a very interesting big project uh, that is uh, being implemented with the generous support of the Adenauer Foundation. We have recorded 20 documentaries uh, on the events uh, that um, have taken place um, back uh, during the 90s uh, in Georgia. Mm, and uh, it has become a very popular project uh, among uh, the students, among the school children. Mm, but also among the civil society that is concerned uh, with history and uh, future developments in Georgia that are very much dependent on real understanding of historic uh, recent ev past events. Um, second uh, flagship project uh, of ours is uh, intra-party democracy. This is where we work with civil society organizations. We work uh, with... Um, uh, party grassroots in political parties uh, on a larger scale. 
promoting intra-party democracy is uh, a big issue uh, for the Georgian society, firstly because it is, uh, in uh, our view, not sufficiently understood as being a problem for democratic development in general, but rather regarded as a internal problem of political parties. Uh, however, the, the problem is that when you see, and I assume it's a general trend everywhere, but particularly in Georgia, there is an alarming trend of rising dissatisfaction towards, towards political parties and political processes. Um, just to give you a sense of the numbers, the recent uh, polls conducted by NDI and IRI have indicated that over 70% of the Georgian voters do not trust political parties and do not feel represented by any of the existing political parties. Uh, and that makes uh, the political process pretty challenging, particularly given the fact that among uh, those political parties uh, are very much affected the opposition political parties. Uh, distress towards is even higher, and uh, the the Georgian opposition voter would cite ninety uh, percent of them would cite that they would even uh, um, they, that they would not trust the um, political opposition parties, which makes um, a landscape pretty fragile in a sense that. We have uh, a ruling party that is uh, being a governing party for 11 years now in power mm, with its uh, lowest of its support uh, um, since they have been in power. Uh, and uh, there still is no alternative uh, that can capitalize um, on, uh, the, on the popular demand and on the popular power. And um, again, this uh, this makes um, this makes um, political decision making, uh, you know, very dubious. Makes uh, pretty corrupt. It uh, alienates the voter. It uh, discredits the entire political process. And this is where they think uh, that uh, key to starting to solve the problem is tackling it with introducing internal party democracy within the political parties. This is where we believe, firstly, the parties need to become democratic, then to regain trust of their voter, uh, to become more representative in a sense that once they have a uh, democratic rule of, uh, you know, renewing its structures, attracting uh, new politicians, uh, attracting real electoral leaders, Mm, that this may change the landscape in a sense that people again um, regain trust into politics and into political parties and then uh, eventually change um, you know, the general situation uh, that makes people so dissatisfied, uh, makes them you know, empathetic, makes them... Uh, nihilistic makes um, you know human capital migrate uh, and uh, which in turn then affects general uh, development of the society mm, these are the major projects we are concerned with we, are, we also uh, closely work um, uh, with uh, schools and school children uh, we have a very popular project of uh, uh, movie screenings and discussions uh, with school children. We screen um, some classic movies like Twelve Angry Men or Rashomon and then have an open discussion uh, with, uh, with children on how to promote critical thinking, how to promote uh, or encourage citizenship and eventually um, put in place uh, you know, a critical amount of young people who would feel responsible for the future of their country, for their own future, and would more would be willing to get more involved um, into the general decision-making process. And this is how we try to encourage um, civic engagement into political processes.